to talk about this 21 thing real quick or do you want to talk I about do. the beats okay I want to talk about the 21 thing. We can always get back to the beats. Okay, I missed some beats too, Mike. I'll tell you, two beats that I missed just real quick, and I got to replace some tracks, and I don't know what I'm replacing. I missed mine playing tricks on me in deep cover. Okay. All right. Well, you know, it's a work in progress. But I'm not perfect, but I know capital punishment and black on both sides aren't a fucking classic. <laughs> Go tell everybody in the metropolitan New York area that Coop said it, and so I'm going to prove it. I'm going to pull up. No, I'm going to pull up. We're going to play these records. What did you think about 21 Savage's American Dream album? I thought the production was stellar. Okay. I thought that the Illmatic cover syndrome lives on with the baby picture on the front. It's fucking 30 years later and still people are putting baby covers on the cover of their album. That's how transcendental that album is. I think... His flow has not changed at all one bit, and neither has the rhetoric, Mike. Yep. I feel like the formula works because it's two to three minute songs with stellar production. But here's the thing. The sequence in it on the album is awful, Mike. Like, mm. I don't know if you've noticed, most of the time when I judge these albums, it's like, well, the music in a vacuum is good, but the sequencing fucking sucks, Mike. Like, tracks 11, 12, and 13... Are all songs about girls, and they're all the same songs. Yeah, I and noticed like, that too. They were all in the back yeah. too, like. And they're all, all in the together. back, and they're all like you didn't break it up at all. And all them songs is so soft as fuck. After you doing all this, I'm a big bad gangster stick talk, and then all of a sudden you're a lover boy, a certified lover boy, like your homie Drake. You heard the Drake influence in this album, right? That's what you were talking about, Mike. Yeah. And it's like, no, no, no. I thought you was a gangster. You were saying stuff like claim you a killer but you still ain't caught a body yet what body is this nigga ever caught to be talking this way but that's neither here nor there it's neither here nor there i took this every album as entertainment nigga, every time i've seen him in this city he's had security with him why are you talking about these other niggas who haven't caught a body it's like you got security with you everywhere you go stop that i say i say that respectfully it's like there's nothing wrong with having security when you get to a certain level but you ain't about to pull up and be calling niggas pussy on your whole album and talking about how gangster you are when you roll with security damn near everywhere you go in this very city right right let it to my brother is a great change of pace mike because until you get to leather to my brother it's just literally all slaughter gang yeah. pussy 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 gang 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 stick talk the second verse on that uh, song is the best verse on the album. Mike, the Metro and Thug record is underwhelming. And I, yeah. and until Thug is free, I want them to stop using Thug's verses because I don't I think agree. it's an accurate depiction of who Thug is as a guest artist. And I'm going to tell you what, even though the Thug verse is underwhelming, like all these verses really have been since he's been locked up, I except agree. for the Metro Spider record, except for the Metro Spider record. Because you know Metro got a lot of Thugs verses. Right. But all of the verses outside of Metro Spider have been underwhelming. But guess what, Mike? It's still better than 21's verse because 21's not that good a rapper. Mm. And I he's not. And because here's because here's what I mean. I said this, uh, you know, I did a station head with Hip Hop Talk, Sean and Adriel, and with Fresh Out. And I said, you know, I talked about it. It's like, well, I know we've elevated Nas because of this run with Hip Boy. But we also need to stop docking people because a 50-year-old guy shouldn't be the best MC in the game. Because hip-hop is supposed to be a young man's sport or a younger man's sport. And this is the year that I'm not only digging through the quakes, but I'm requiring niggas to step their rap game up. And his flow and his delivery and his rhetoric has not changed one iota since he stepped into the game, Mike. Like, right. it hasn't. And it's just a fact. It's real. And, and you know so what? In, a, in an album like this, when you take that. on... When you take on themes and structure and call it the American dream and you have your mother doing the intro talking about the hardships of coming into this country for her son to have a better life, now the expectations are are out for you to do more than just slaughter gang shit. But see what happened and what I heard from this album with that intro and that build up and, and the rollout and the name of the album and everything, okay, that's to pull people into his story but when it's time to tell the story, no, I'm just going to do what I've always been doing. And now you become an entertainer more so than an artist. An artist pulls you into their world, their life, their story. You try to let everything else do that. But when it came time for you to be an artist, 
You just were an entertainer. Those are some of the things that I've said about Pusha T's It's Almost Dry. Like, there yeah. was a moment there to say, you know what? Okay, well, this is the album I'm going to show people that I can do more than just what they say I'm good at. But he and, leaned and he on started, what he was good at. And he started off that album well with Brambleton, Mike. I was like, oh, Pusha T actually telling a story and a true story about his origins, yeah. and about the breakup with Tony. I'm like, wonderful way to start this album. But Mike, then you're right. Then it goes into Let the Smoker Shine the Coop, which is a brilliant record. And then it's like after that, it kind of like starts this process where it's like, oh, no, Pusha T album. Yeah. Got it. Good. But here's the thing about it. Pusha T got different flows. Yeah. And deliveries and cadences. And he's skilled. And vocal inflections. Yeah. He's a complete MC. It's his rhetoric that sometimes is not complete, but he's a complete MC. And so, and, and, I, and I mean this sincerely, the intro for the, that his mom did set me up with a totally different expectation for the project, Mike. Straight up. I, I agree with totally you. Totally different expectation based on the intro. I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, this nigga's actually about to start telling us who he is. After mm -hmm. all these years of not knowing who he is, because it's all slaughter gang, slide on you pussy. Yeah. Yeah. And and like and like literally, Mike, it's like right after the intro, it's like, no, that's all slaughter gang shit till track six. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then it's more slaughter gang shit until you get to all the girly records that sound like the same record, and them records ain't good. The sequencing is bad. The message is confusing and misplaced. Red Sky is great, Mike. Red Sky. Because, and here's another note that I had. Well, you see who he's not as a rapper when he's on a record with somebody else who can rap, like a Dirk. Even Doja Cat, Mike. I like, liked his last Travis. verse on the song with uh, Dirk. But you're right about Doja Cat, and it's funny. Jay-Z went out there and was a lot in Doja, Doja Cat. smashed him. I, listen, I've been saying this on this show for, like, years, I feel like. And when Jay-Z went out there and was giving Doja Cat credit for her verse on um, the uh, the Clarence movie or whatever, people are like, oh, yeah, Doja Cat can rhyme this and that. I'm like, I've been saying this. Like, Doja Cat's probably one of the stronger mainstream rappers out there, not to mention song makers. No, she but yeah, she'll wrap circles record. around him. She wraps circles around him. Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not even a conversation. And it's like, real talk, it's like, not being funny, you letting... You getting bodied by a singer chick? Yeah, a pop artist. Now, most of is Doja Cat pop. That's a pop artist. <laughs> That's why I would super chat. Him, Mike, she bodied him on that record, yeah. and I love that record. But yeah. she bodied him. She made that record. That's why. So, hold on, let me get to these super chats real quick. I'm gonna let you finish. Um, I don't want to build up too too much. That's why the super chat says. Y'all are deliberately missing the point. Uh, making non-hip-hop record or two doesn't disqualify you. Do a pie chart of Drake's music. Hip-hop is just a fraction of it. <laughs> we want to pick and he choose. He does more rap. Hold choose. on. All, all respect due to Esquire, Drake does more rap songs than he does anything else, and it's always been that way. He has more rap songs than most stuff does. It's the truth. He probably has double the rap songs most stuff yeah. does. What do you mean? Yeah. Like even double. even with all his singing shit, if you want to do a pie chart or whatever, it's too, let's see who made more rap songs. And the answer's Drake. That's Mike. This is what I'm about to say. Let's see who's made more dope rap songs, because that's Drake too. That's why the super chat says kid. two things can be true. One, Drake is undoubtedly a hip hop legend. Uh, two, he is more of a hybrid genreless artist than a pure MC slash hip hop artist. That's uh, that was his plan. Uh, I don't care see. how y'all feel. Uh, Jay Short with the Super Chat says... Y'all don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> Jay Short with the Super Chat says, 21 is the newest version of Fab. A lot of flash, but no substance or depth. Fab was just slicker and more witty about it. Fab had different flows. It's the same exact flow on every record, Mike. You're right. Melvin Wright with the Super Chat says, have you guys checked uh, Jed out? The Bodie slash Craven album, absolutely fire. Got to check on check that out too. We gotta we gotta finish listening to the Cuddy and we gotta listen to the Boldy Craven. Yep. But yeah, what were you saying before? Uh, jumped in with the super chats. Oh, I mean, most of the same stuff that I was saying. It's just like the album's uneven. The production is stellar. His flow and his rhetoric hasn't changed at all. 
the 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 intro of his mom and the album cover is a big big letdown like because you're expecting him to actually talk about something he's talking about nothing Mm -hmm. uh red sky is a great record dark days is a dope album closer the message of this album is uneven and you know here's the thing it's like when we talk about you know when we talk about uh drake and future like talking like 25 year old dude still in the club well, understand like 21 Savage is still like 31, 32 talking about like murder, murder, kill, kill. And right. it's like, like, nigga, you're not killing nobody. Right. You know I what mean, I'm saying? And that's it's great. Like, you, ain't, <laughs> you ain't, you ain't sliding on nobody. You probably ain't never slid on nobody. Like, let's, let's just keep it like real. And like, this was his opportunity to like open himself up a little bit. I was hoping, and I'm not joking when I say this, I was hoping working with Drake would make him more vulnerable, but just made him make three corny ass pop songs about women in a row. Mm. With the same flow. Yeah. The production carries this album. It's a dope album, Mike, but the production carries it. It's like, it's something that, you know, the ATL in me is just going to ride to it. But it's like, it's the same flow, Mike. It's Again, it made me look at the difference between an artist and an entertainer. And y'all want to talk about, or most Def wants to talk about Drake being a pop artist. These are the things that I would say aesthetically would make someone more of, I guess, a non-pure artist because this isn't about the artistry. This isn't about the story. It's not about any of those things. This is just straight up about, I want to make some stuff that I'm good at and that people are going to bob their head to, but you framed it like this was going to be an artist's story. That's the problem. This is just another this is another mixtape, pretty much. But you framed it like Huh? It's more false advertisement. More? Mad Max with the Super Chat says Drake is more fab than 21. Well. No, nah, I mean, they said Mike loved the 21 album. I didn't say I loved the 21 album. I think I said I was conflicted in the story. And I felt again what I just said. It was entertainment. I took it as entertainment. And they advertised it like it was going to be something else. Play a couple of those songs. Ride to a couple of those songs, like Coop said. But if we're going to really break this thing down, I can't really give it high marks for what it didn't do. And the comfortability that it just leaned on. But again, these are reasons why people are talking down on podcasters like us. Because we're holding the music to a higher regard. And we're giving people real critiques. And if it's great, it's great. We're not just trying to um, down records just to down them. Just being honest. So, so, Mike, I think we need to get back to having a more concise rating scale. And so I'm going to ask you. And I think we should use four things to rate it. And you tell me what else it should be, okay. actually. And I'm writing them down right now. What do you think about rating these albums this year? And doing a combination of five categories. Production, lyrics, content, flow slash delivery, and impact. Trying to think of what I was missing. Um, that's... I think production and cohesiveness and all that kind of comes together. Oh, 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 um, oh. Executive produ- production. Should we make a separate category for sequencing? Because I think that matters. Because what I see in a lot of these projects, Mike, is that even if it has the potential to be a great project, sequencing is killing a lot of the modern day project because there's not an A&R. If there are A&Rs, which Nick Love showed us there are still A&Rs, they're not in the building with some of these majors because they're just making their own decisions, it seems like. Right. Okay. Well, sequencing needs to be in there then. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything unless we think of something different, unless the people think of something different as well. But yeah, that's pretty much everything that a, a album needs to, the marks that an album needs to hit yeah. to be able to be rated properly. Because production and sequencing go to the producers and executive producers. Lyrics, content, flow, and delivery go to the artist, and impact goes to the culture. So you I think, cool with those six things? I'm cool with those six things. I think we might need to create a metric where it's like we rate those things on a scale from one to ten, and then we give them an overall score based on that. 
so we're not sitting here giving everything the same rating. You know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, well, this Correct. is a four, and this is a four, and this is a four. Where I think we need a more robust rating scale when it comes to rating albums now. I think it's deeper than just the five mic thing. Right. It's too hard. There are too many, there's too many 3.5s to 4.25s yeah. running around this motherfucker. Yeah, and we had to learn that based on trial and error. But yeah, I think that that's a good way for us to really start differentiating, you know, the men from the boys, basically, you know, for lack of a better term. Are you sure there's nothing that we're missing? Because Someone that would make our sequencing scale out of sticks. Can go Production, with lyrics, content, flow, slash delivery, impact, sequencing. Yeah. Impact is really dicey. Because I don't know if that's fair to some of the independent art, uh, acts. Or like if a Shea Noir is dropping something that's quality, quality. And the impact might not be where some of her counterparts are just based on their situation you know what i mean i think impact is relative to what your following is okay not relative to the culture anymore because i don't think that's fair on the multitude of scales that the artists exist on now so let's just when say I'm this impact, shay has like impact, impact on i'm sorry not to interrupt like, you but go ahead go ahead no i'm saying how does this impact 21's fan base Right. I was going to say, let's just say Shay impacts the grassroots or her fan base. That's all people are talking about when it comes to that album. We could rate that as the same way as if Megan drops an album and she's on Good Morning America and all that stuff to promote. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. Because this is what I mean about impacting on your grassroots level. Shay was just on a local Buffalo station about some of her side ventures. You know what I'm saying? So she has impact, but we have to make the impact relative to who the artist is. Is like so. Twenty one is a pretty big artist in this space. How impactful is this album on a scale of one to ten? Right. Because I would tell, because I would tell you that if ten is the is the litmus test, that it's like I'm just giving this impact a five. Well, I got a slide. It's been a great show. Um, hit like and subscribe. I hate to cut you mid sentence, but let's uh, carry this on Wednesday. No, Mike, we got to do these ratings right quick. Give me the production rating on your on your thought. It'll take 60 oh. seconds. Production is what out of 10? Huh. Because we can just meet in the middle. Like, Because I feel like whatever the rating should be is like wherever our numbers are, we'll just put it in the middle. So you tell me yours. I'm thinking on a production level, I'm going to give it an 8. I'm with you on the 8. Lyrics? That's a 6. I'm at a 5, so that's a 5.5. .5. Okay. Content? Content's a 3 to me. Okay, I'm with that. The flow and delivery is at a four, because it's... I think that's fair. Okay. Impact? Uh, I think the impact's at around a nine. It's everywhere. Hold on. I agree. Hold on one second, Coop. Hello? We just had one more, nigga. Mike Mister, who's been in there talking about capital punishment so much, I know my homework. My cousin Six played capital punishment all the time. It's a long album. It's a great album. It's not a classic rap album. It doesn't stand next to other classic rap albums from its era. I don't have to go like to 94. It's like I can bring up the stuff that got made in the back half of the 90s from 96 to 2000, and it doesn't measure up. It's a great album. It's not a classic album. Same thing with black on both sides. Get over it. Yeah, I got some uh, service people here that I gotta Not attend. Negotiating. Yeah. I don't negotiate with terrorists and I don't make concession speeches. <laughs> Capital Punishment is a great album, not a classic album. Sequencing, Mike, I think the sequencing is just a five out of ten. I'm fine with I think five. it's one of the things that make the hurt the album. So I'll do um I'll do a post with the overall rating because this would be six, so it would be out of sixty. Okay. And so then I'll do a percentage point because maybe we'll start giving them actual test scores. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I think this will work well. Right. So 21 is the first test score of the year. All right. Hit like and subscribe. We appreciate y'all. We're going to holler at y'all Wednesday.